KLK 102.5 FM. Good morning to you. This is Community Conversations. Kato Wonder in the studio with you. I am solo today. I don't have my co-host with me, Mrs. Quibila Harden, but in the studio with us today, we have Mr. Connor Eldridge. Mr. Eldridge is the Democratic candidate running for the United States Senate for the state of Arkansas. Now, let me give a disclaimer. KLK and the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council does not endorse nor support any candidate for office. We just provide this information so that you can be an informed voter. No compensation was provided to the station for this interview. How you doing today, Mr. Eldridge? Should I call you Mr. Eldridge or should I call you Connor? Call me Connor. Thanks for having me. All right, well, Connor, we thank you for stopping by the studio. So let's go ahead and get started. Just tell the listeners about yourself and your background. Sure. Well, uh, I'm Connor Eldridge again. I'd ask everybody for their vote on November 8th. And uh, I'm married. I've got three kids. They're age nine, five, and four, Will and Henry and Tull. Life was dull. We decided to run for the Senate. Uh, I grew up you in. You didn't get enough excitement um, <laughs> with a wife and three kids. Uh, I was being a little sarcastic. Oh, okay. So it, uh, we've got a lot of energy uh, in our house right now, and uh, it's been a fun summer campaign and everywhere across the state. I've lived lots of places across the state. Grew up in Lone Oak and Augusta, not too far from where we sit here in Jonesboro, uh, and uh, am proud to be running to represent this entire state. Okay, and tell a little bit about your background. I believe that you were a former prosecutor. I was for the last five years the United States Attorney in Western Arkansas, so I was the Chief Federal Prosecutor uh, for 34 counties in Western Arkansas, uh, even though I grew up on this side of the state. Uh, we lived in Arkadelphia and Fort Smith and Fayetteville during that time. Um, and I'm proud of the work we did there, everything from prosecuting some really bad crimes, abusive kids, and things that uh, just are horrible cases. Also was proud to have started a program to help kids that desperately need our help. Um, and this program makes it so that kids in homes that police go into uh, get the help they need uh, by way of having their teachers notified of uh, the fact that one of their parents was arrested. And uh, my belief is that when we reach those kids, they're the ultimate victims of, of crime, and we need to reach them uh, and get them the help that they need so that they don't repeat that cycle and so that they really have a chance in life, and I'm proud to have done that. You know, I think being a prosecutor uh, isn't just about being tough on crime. It is about that, but it's also about giving a helping hand to those kids that need help, uh, to people that are coming out of prison. Um, I'm a big believer in reentry programs uh, and in efforts to make sure that people uh, get the help that they need uh, to, to be a productive part of society. And I'm proud to have done the job of a prosecutor that way. And as a former teacher, I can say that if such a program was in place, it would definitely be of help to know that these kids have went through something traumatic. It could definitely help the teacher deal with those children. So I think that definitely is a good idea and hopefully something that both Democrats and Republicans could both get behind. Now, we're going to transition because you mentioned about education, about your prosecutorial background. With your background as a prosecutor, you have worked hand in hand with law enforcement. And as you know, this is a time of tension between law enforcement and communities in which they feel that they've been maybe treated unfairly by law enforcement, particularly minorities. If you are elected to the Senate, what will you do to help repair the relationship between law enforcement and the communities that they serve? Well, you hit on a very important issue. And you know, I'm proud to have worked with law enforcement, uh, and I also know that no one is as pained by um, problems and things that happen in law enforcement as good law enforcement officers, the vast majority of police officers out there that I've worked with. But there are uh, a few that do things that they shouldn't do, and I have prosecuted police officers when they have broken the law and crossed that line. Um, and so I'm proud of that. As a senator, I'll continue that pattern of doing both of those things, standing up for good law enforcement that I believe in, that I'm proud to work with, but also um, calling out those who do make mistakes, not more than mistakes, who commit, um, do, do things that are, uh, that cross the line in a clear way. And the bottom line is, you know, um, we need a dialogue about the problems that uh, people face on this issue. You know, um, I've heard stories from uh, my many African-American friends 
uh, about profiling and situations that they've been in that are something, quite honestly, that I can't fully relate to, uh, but I hear their voice, and it would be my job in the United States Senate to represent all our Kansans, and I certainly uh, will continue to give voice to all sides of of this issue, and I think it's important that uh, law enforcement and all of us work together to make sure everyone is treated fairly and equally. All right, uh, and Connor, we thank you for that answer, and I think that's something that our listeners definitely feel strongly about and feel passionately about as well. So let's kind of transition to something else that is a concern of the minority community. Recently, the Justice Department ended the use of private prisons, and the Justice Department under President Obama has taken steps for sentencing reform. As a former prosecutor, you know, you've kind of been in the forefront of this. So what are your thoughts on these reforms? And if you are elected to the Senate, what will you do for as, in regards to criminal justice reform? Well, I am a, a believe that we need criminal justice reform. Um, I support uh, the bipartisan effort to make sure that that, that happens. And, you know, I was uh, pretty appalled by the comment of one of our senators when he said several months ago that we have an under-incarceration problem in this country. Um, I disagree with that. Uh, In the United States of America, we incarcerate uh, more people per capita than anywhere else in the world. And that's a problem. And we feel that in Arkansas because our incarceration rates here are very high. And it's a, it's a difficult problem that needs to be discussed, and we need to do something about it. Reentry programs, as I mentioned earlier, programs like the one I started to help kids in troubled homes uh, and other efforts are a big part of the solution there. And I intend to work to help get uh, legislation passed that, that uh, both remains um, tough on the worst, most violent criminals, but also gives uh, a better chance to others that get caught up in the criminal justice system. All right, we certainly thank you for the uh, for the answer. We're speaking with Connor Eldridge, Democratic candidate for the United States Senate. Now, Connor, many people who run for Congress in the Senate, you know, they say, I'm going to go to Washington, I'm going to change the gridlock, but many of them, they fail to do so, they get there and they kind of get caught up in the system. So what will make you different if you get elected senator? Well, I'm hard-headed, <laughs> and I think the choice in this election uh, is, is one about strength um, and leadership and hard work. Um, I intend to do this job differently than the guy I'm running against. I intend to speak out, to stand up, to work hard every day to fight for all people in Arkansas, uh, people of any race, of any background, of any life story. And that's, uh, that's the way I do the job. I think Washington has too much... Um, uh, people have lost their way in Washington. And the way to solve that is to go in knowing who you work for. And I would be working for the people of Arkansas and fighting for them every day. And I think that's how you solve it. Now, you just said that you will be working for the people of Arkansas. So if you are elected to the sen- Senate, will you, how accessible will you be to the people? How, will people be able to reach out to you? Will they be able to easily find you and voice their concerns? Will you be a senator in which the people can feel like they can speak to? Definitely. I, you know, I intend to be... Uh, I've traveled to all 75 counties in this campaign in the first 10 months. My opponent's got counties in this state, entire counties he's never been to. Um, I grew up in Lone Oak and Woodruff County. Uh, Woodruff County, not far from here, is the second smallest county in the state. That's one of the counties he's never been to. And so, you know, that matters to me. I intend to continue to travel this state as a U.S. Senator. Um, Voters won't have to uh, look hard for me because I'll be in their communities uh, and certainly continue to travel this state in an aggressive way. It's the only way I know to do this job. It's a pretty simple job. You listen to the people of Arkansas, you go to their communities, you hear them out, and then you seek to go fight for them in Washington. Well, I just want to say if you are elected sen- a senator and even, and of course we would say the same thing to Senator Boozman if he's elected, we extend this platform at KLEK for you to come on to any time to speak to the listeners, to let them know what's going on and to give them the opportunity to ask questions as well because I think that is very important for the community. Now, Connor, if you are elected senator, what are some of your plans to help improve education and health care? Because those are two things that people are very concerned about as well. 
Well, uh, on education, my mom taught the fifth grade in Lone Oak, Arkansas, and that's my perspective. Uh, having attended Lone Oak Public Schools and Augusta Elementary um, prior to that. And so I think there are a whole bunch of things we need to do. I do think local educators um, need to be, and particularly teachers, need to be empowered um, and supported. And we need to make sure that we're given uh, a, a strong chance to all kids in our communities, that we're not um, picking some kids over others, that every child in our community has, has an honest fair chance to succeed and that we support all kids regardless of race regardless of background regardless of who they are who their families are um, as to health care there's a big distinction on this issue in this race i support the affordable care act um, and arkansas works and the private option they're not perfect um, they need to be uh, there are things we need to do to fix them um, but my opponent is for getting rid of the current system that we have and basically ending health insurance for 267,000 people that these programs have provided in Arkansas. That would damage a lot of folks in, in Craighead County and throughout our state. It would result in uh, grave threats to our rural hospitals and the close and, and some of them closing. And bottom line, we got to stand up for regular uh, hard work in Arkansans to make sure they've got access to health care, got a good hospital uh, fairly close by, and that their families have the care they need when something happens to them. That's what I'm for, and that's what I'll continue to stand up for. All right, thank you. And once again, we're speaking with Connor Eldridge, candidate for the United States Senate. This is KLK 102.5 FM. Connor, gun control is a very passionate issue. How do we balance people's Second Amendment rights along with the need to reduce the number of shootings in America? Do you think that any progress can be made with such powerful opposition to any form of gun control? I do think progress can be made. Um, you know, uh, this is an issue that creates false choices, I think. Um, you know, we ought to be able to both make the, the system of purchasing guns better and easier for law-abiding gun owners um, like me, and then tougher on those who shouldn't have guns like violent criminals, uh, felons, um, those who, who have... Uh, uh, have have mental disease or or mental instability um, and terrorists. Uh, I support the bill that would ban um, gun purchases from uh, those who have been investigated for terrorism. Um, I think that that after the Orlando shooting, that that's something that ought to happen. My opponents against that. But the bottom line is, you know, I'm committed to making sure our communities are as safe as they can be. That's something I've worked quite a bit at, um, and and I, I intend to continue to to support that. And I do think there's room to to do a lot better job in that area. All right, now Connor. In regards to terrorism, which you just brought up, national security is a concern for the American people. What do you feel is the best way to combat the threat of terrorism? Also an issue because of the fear of the actions of a few. Some people choose to label Islam in a bad light. What do you think it would also take to educate people that not all Muslims are terrorists, but instead that their religion has been hijacked by a small minority that wishes to do harm to people but doesn't represent the majority of people of the Islamic faith? Well, I think that we are having a, a debate on that issue nationally, and you know, um, we've—I do not support categorical bans on entry in this country of people of any background. I just think that's, uh, you know, I, I agree with Colin Powell on this issue. I think that that's not um, uh, the way we should go about things in the United States of America, and I think we need to be very, very careful to. Um, make sure that we properly identify those who are our enemies as a country. And that group includes those radical jihadist uh, terrorists, and it does not include all of any particular religion. Um, and that, that applies to, uh, to any religion, including, including the Muslim religion, too. All right. Well, Connor, we want to thank you. Uh, for that response. And now a hot topic that has come up on in the state of Arkansas is the concept of legal marijuana or cannabis, however you want to label it. And there, we actually have two proposed ballot amendments. We have issue seven, and I'm not sure what the name of the, the number of the other one is that would seek to legalize cannabis. So just kind of give your thoughts on that. Well, I support uh, a medical marijuana program in Arkansas. That's a big distinction in this race. Uh, my opponent is opposed to that, uh, and, and I think it's something that needs to happen. You know, I just, uh, 
this is not a hard issue for me. Um, you know, even as a prosecutor, uh, I see that people like my stepmom, who survived breast cancer and then uh, had a recurrence and died uh, several years ago, if marijuana would ease her pain, she should have access to it. Um, and that's that's what uh, that's where I am on that issue. And uh, for that reason, I support a responsible medical marijuana program in Arkansas. Well, I think you just earned the vote of one Mrs. Gail Raspberry. So, Gail, if you're listening, shout out to you. All right, Connor, unfortunately, we're just almost out of time. So I just want to make this last question very simple. Like I said, make the case for why someone should vote for you. Anything else that we haven't covered that you want to say to our listeners out there? Well, I, I believe it's time for a strong new voice from Arkansas, and I'm running to be that voice. I think that, uh, you know, I'm tired of politics. I'm tired of partisanship. I'm tired of, of, of government not getting anything done and not representing all people. And I'm running to be a strong new voice for all people in Arkansas, all people in Jonesboro and Craighead County and in the 75 counties across this state. Um, these are important times with a lot of important issues. And I'm running to speak up, uh, to, to stand up, to be a strong fighter on behalf of all people in Arkansas. All right, Connor, we want to thank you for stopping by the studio. We've been speaking with Connor Eldridge, Democratic candidate for the United States Senate. Now, once again, KLEK and the Voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council does not endorse nor support any candidate for office. We just provide the form so that you can be informed when you step into the ballot box. Also, no compensation was provided for this interview. We want to thank Connor for once again stopping by the studio. You're welcome to come back anytime to speak to our listeners. This is Kate, LEK, 102.5 FM.